a gunman came into the cell, put six bullets very slowly into the magazine of his gun, pointed it at me, and started to squeeze the trigger. Now the rockets have been taken out of the vehicle. They're being placed here towards Israel, which is just a few hundred meters away, and they're about to fire. So we're going to get out as fast as possible. In 2010, I was in Gaza making a film about a militant Palestinian who'd been firing rockets at Israel but had changed his mind. He was locked up eventually and accused of being a spy. I didn't believe that because why would he make a film criticizing the regime on which he'd been spying and allowing a Westerner to do so? I went to give evidence in his military trial. When I got there, I was told I was his master spy. I was arrested, I was handcuffed, I was taken to a cell, and then a, a gunman came into the cell, put six bullets very slowly into the magazine of his gun, pointed it at me, and started to squeeze the trigger. I thought, this is the end. I kind of stood up expecting to hear the bang. I thought, well, you know, I don't feel deep fear because I'd already decided by then that if God had decided that this was the end of my life, who am I to argue? His finger squeezed the trigger, it got halfway across and suddenly he stopped. It seemed like an age as he was in that position. And then he turned his gun upwards and laughed. That was the introduction to what turned out to be 26 days of detention when I was accused of being a spy, told I was going to be executed. And twice I thought I was going to die beyond the first incident I just mentioned. I did believe I was going to die at some point during my imprisonment or quite soon and I decided to make those last few days or hours that I had left at least in some way meaningful. So I tried to be decent even to the prison guards. Later I was thrown into a, a much worse cell, very dark, very dingy, lots of mosquitoes in a so-called hole in the ground, a toilet. Uh, but while I was in that cell they threw a man, a prisoner, into it. I was supposed to, as I say, be in isolation, so I was surprised he arrived. He had swollen hands and feet, and he looked in awful condition. And as he lay down on my thin mattress, which I allocated to him, he pulled out of a plastic bag three dates out of six that were in the bag, and gave me those three dates. That meant he gave me half of everything he owned in the world thought to myself at that point, you know, you'll find goodness in every dark corner of this world. And when I was, I think, miraculously released after 26 days, I made it my mission to try and save Muhammad, who was the man I'd been filming, and to save him from almost certain execution. And to our amazement, through a campaign, we managed to get him out of that prison, and he's still alive today. I have met him secretly. And both of us have learned a great deal and I think become better people as a result of our trials and tribulations. No.